Greetings and welcome to the Mount Pisgah AME Church's Youth and Young Adult Service. I am Reverend Brian. And I am Brea. And on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend C. Michelle Langston, all of our youth leadership, and our Mount Pisgah AME Church family, we greet you and invite you to worship with us today. Today we are celebrating Mother's Day. We give love and honor to all the mothers out there. And we say thank you for who you are and all that you've done the things that we've seen, and the things that we will never, ever know about. This is your day, so please rejoice and be glad in it. As always, may something that is said or done during this service encourage you in your walk with Jesus, who is the Christ, and help strengthen your relationship with God Almighty. And now let's get ready to give God some praise, because it really is truly all about Him.
Amen. Isn't everything inevitably all about Jesus? Where would we be without our God, who is the author and finisher of our faith? And where would we be without our mothers? I know where I might be, and it wouldn't be here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but I'm thankful to my mom, for she truly provided an example of courage, strength, love, and resilience. Thank you, Mama. I love you. And that's the beauty that I saw in my wife, the mother of my children. Thank you, honey, for who you are, and thank you for all that you do. I love you. Whether you are a mother who has one, two, or several children, or you don't have any biological children at all, but you are a mother figure to someone around you, we thank you for the work that you've done, sacrifices you've made, and the efforts that you've put into raising us up, into who God intends for us to be. And for those whose mothers have passed on, or you don't have a great relationship, I'm reminded of Psalm 27 when it says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. God has not forgotten you. He's ready to take you up. Your grief is real. Your stress is real. And yet, our God is realer. Continue to pray about what's in your heart. God hears you, and he's listening to your cries, even on this day as we celebrate mothers. Now let, let us pray. Let us pray. Hello, my name is AJ and I will be saying a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Hope we all have a great day today. I hope we all have a great Sunday today. And I hope people who went to Mount Pisgah and the church to the Easter egg hunt on all seven eggs. I hope everyone will have a great week this week. And I hope everyone who's on spring break has a great spring break. And everyone who still has a little bit of spring break left, enjoy the little bit of spring break that they have left. Amen. Hello, this is Brandon. And this is Brea. We're going to sing the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And our favorite verse is Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. my youth and my young adults, I just want to thank God for you. I thank God for you having the desire to want to seek God and have a closer walk with Him. And so as we continue to enter into God's presence, I pray God's blessings upon you, that God does a, a miraculous thing in your life, and He does exceedingly and abundantly, more than you can imagine or even think of, according to the power that's in you, and you have great power in you.
I want to wish all of the grandmothers, the mothers, the sisters, the aunts, the cousins, all of the women, happy Mother's Day. I pray God's blessings upon you and just relax and allow them to cater to you today for this is your special day. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope you love this. Love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Uh, hello. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you because of all the things you do. Bye. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Mom, thank you for everything you're doing for me and this family, and um, I appreciate you, Mom. Love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, and I hope you like this. I love you. Bye. Thing. Amen. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. Hope you have a great day. Uh, happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you for everything you've done for the family. Uh, love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. We hope you have a great day. Wish you have a very happy Mother's Day, Mom. And I hope you get very good cards. Was Jesus's mom. An angel told her she'd have a baby. Stay calm. Eh, okay. Let's, do this. Let's meet Joseph, who had a dream one night. He took Mary to be his wife. It was right. Uh, hi. You're right. Really? Yeah. 
Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, but found there was no room in the inn for them. No, I'm sorry. Oh, man. They stayed the night in a barn where they'd sleep. Uh, what about her? Um, okay. Among the goats and cows and maybe even sheep. Whoa. <laughs> Baby Jesus was born in a barn that night. And an angel came to shepherds nearby. Uh oh. It gave them a fright. <gasps> the angel said, Don't be afraid. Uh, okay. The Savior has been born on the earth today. They found baby Jesus just as the angel had said. Wow. <laughs> wrapped up and lying in a manger bed. Later, some wise men came from very far. They traveled to find the king by following a star. Woohoo! When they found Jesus, he was just a little boy. They gave him gifts and were filled with joy. That is the story of how Jesus, God's son, was born to save us, each and every one. Um, our scripture for today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore, I have also lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. God's word for God's people. Amen. Yeah. Oh!
Last Mother's Day, I told a story about how my mom organized a party for me at Chuck E. Cheese. If you missed it, here's a quick look at that. I remember when I was a kid, about six or seven years old, my mom, a young single mother, wanted to throw me a birthday party with some family and friends. She saved up some money, got the decorations together, and secured the venue. Good old Chuck E. Cheese. That was the place to be back in the day. Back then, you didn't have as many places as you have now, so Chuck E. Cheese was the spot. You got to play games, eat pizza, and got a personal music show and greetings from Chuck E. himself. My mom set it all up, got all the folks together, and all was going good at the party until Chuck E. came out. Her son, yes, yours truly. Man, I saw Chuck E. and I was so scared. I saw this six-foot rat and I freaked out. <laughs> I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. The shock on my mother's face, the surprise from her to my reaction. I knew it was a lot, but she held it together. Eventually, she calmed her son down and told Chucky, you got to go. I don't remember much about that party, but I do remember that after I saw that rat, I didn't want to see him again. And I do remember that my mom made sure that he stayed away long enough for us to have some semblance of a party before we had to roll out. <laughs> when I think about my mother and all the moms across the globe, I've come to understand that they are always working up front and behind the scenes, doing their best to make sure that our lives and experiences are the best and safest possible. You and I may never know what our mothers have had to endure to help provide the life that we have. We don't see the countless hours and the endless prayers of their sacrifice, the mental and physical weight that they had to carry to bring us into the world, and the unwavering efforts to keep us here. I love listening to that story for so many reasons, the most significant one being that it reminds me just how much I am loved by my mom. It reminds me that there is someone out there in this world who loved and cared for me more than I could ever know. Oh, how God has blessed us as children to be loved in this life, to have family, to have shared experiences that create happy memories, to make living life just a little easier. Our text today puts us in the front row of Hannah's life. Hannah was the wife to Elkanah and she could not have children. Back in those days, if a woman could not have kids, people thought it was a curse from God and the woman would feel like a failure. Have you ever felt like a failure? Especially because of how other people thought your life should go? Hmm. Anyways, Hannah's husband loved her very much, but because she could not have children, he had a second wife named Panina, and she was very mean to Hannah. She would make fun of her and provoke her just because Panina had kids, but Hannah could not have any. In fact, the Bible says her rival would taunt her severely just to provoke her, because the Lord had kept her from conceiving. We learn from Hannah's initial experience that life will test you. The world will provoke you. And the world will try to capitalize on your perceived weaknesses. That's why we have to do like Ephesians says, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When people or circumstances try to ridicule you or tear you down, don't jeopardize your future prize because of an emotional response to provocation. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Don't jeopardize your future prize because of an emotional response to being provoked. Mm. But Reverend Brian, it's so hard. Yes, it is, I know. The Bible even tells us that for Hannah's story, year after year, when she went up to the Lord's house, her rival taunted her in this way. Hannah would weep. Hannah would not eat. Her husband would ask her, Hannah, why are you crying? Why won't you eat? Why are you troubled? Am I not better to you than 10 sons? Elkanah said this because he would always give Hannah more than he gave Panina. The Bible says that he would give her a double portion. It makes me ask the question, what is the thing that you don't have that you are so deeply hurt about or desperate for that you cannot see how good God has been to you. Hmm. Let me say it a different way. 
even though there is something that we can complain about, in what area has God given you a double portion? Wow. Listen, these questions are on fire. Why? Because I'm living them myself right now. I too am mixed all up trying to get things right. But I'm posing them because we all have to continuously check ourselves, our mental and emotional state. We got to check that and align ourselves with God's Holy Spirit. We are in a fight, y'all. Battlefield of the mind. Hannah was in a mental battle for her own sanity, desperately wanting to be a mother while enduring the constant bullying of Panina. Despite my own problems, I've come to realize that we have to govern ourselves according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, where it says we have to understand and internalize that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, or casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought, every thought, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. On this Mother's Day, look, not going to keep you long. I know you as mothers, y'all want to rest, be left alone. Really, you want to eat, be left alone. I already got my orders. So I'm just here to provide a little bit of encouragement from what we can learn from Hannah's story. My first point is this, be intentional about what you want from God. Be intentional about what you want from God. Hannah knew exactly what she wanted from God, and she prayed and prayed out of sheer desperation, crying out to the Lord. She wanted a son so badly that she made a vow, a promise to God to give her son back to him. While we must always be careful not to make promises we cannot keep, the Bible tells us better not to vow than to vow and not pay. We should always be intentional in our prayers and the requests and petitions that we make to God. To all the mothers, look, I'm just here to remind you, be specific in your prayers. It's important. It's important. It's important. Yes, God knows where you are. God knows what you need. But speaking specifically for what you desire, we need that. Why? Because your prayers have saved so many of us and help so many of us along the way. I know I've been helped by the prayers of my mom, the prayers of my grandmother. And even when your children have strayed, those prayers are what help us boomerang, come back to God. Be intentional and watch the shock and amazement that you experience when God delivers on what you've asked him. My second point is this, the Lord remembers you. The Lord remembers you. The scripture said, and the Lord remembered her. After some time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel because she said, I requested him from the Lord. Listen, God has not forgotten you. I don't care what that thing is, what you've asked for for a long time ago. God knows exactly what you need and he knows exactly where you are. We just have to remember that he is working according to his plan, not our own according to his plan and not our own. Here's a way to think about it. Hannah had a barren womb for years, years. This caused her much heartache. She faced criticism, ridicule, harsh treatment. But had she had children when she wanted them, we might not have the anointing of David as king or the appropriate bloodline of Jesus. Wow. Listen, during that time, things were getting so bad that the people were becoming spiritually and morally bankrupt. God was waiting for the right moment to set up the dominoes for the coming of his son from her suffering to our salvation. God has not forgotten you. He is working out his divine plan. This leads me to the last point, and this is for all you moms out there. You never know who you're raising. You never know who you are raising. Hannah prayed and prayed, and she stated in our focal scripture, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. What Hannah didn't know was that her child, Samuel, whom she gave back to the Lord, 
would grow to be a prophet and a priest. Samuel will be one of the last judges of Israel and would serve as a major transitional figure from the lawless days under the judges to the structure under Israel's monarchy with kings. Samuel would hear from God and select Saul as king and then later anoint David. Samuel would live his days as a man of great influence, as someone directly connected to God. Samuel would be a significant connection for the lineage that gave us Jesus Christ. Moms, look at the children you're raising. Who are they now? Who will they be? We all know as parents, we don't turn out finished products, but we do help to build and shape the foundation of their lives. And that's why a mother's role and a mother's love is so important. You are never a failure. You are always good enough. You are necessary. Your sacrifices are appreciated. You are loved. As Proverbs 31 says, For your worth is far above rubies. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Continue to be a blessing. We thank you for everything that you do is with you always you're special it's your mom let us pray heavenly and gracious father i thank you right now for all the moms mom figures everybody in the world lord anyone who has ever had that responsibility of motherhood lord i just ask that you bless them and keep them right now on this day where we honor them for mother's day lord let your angels have charge over them Protect and keep them and keep your hedge of protection around them. And Lord, right now, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice who doesn't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord, I ask that you come into their heart, save them, open up their heart, quiet their mind, so that you can come in and shower them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, all they need to do is understand and confess that they are sinners, but that they would believe that Jesus is real and that God raised him from the dead. And we confess that with our mouth and receive that free gift of salvation. And we believe it in our hearts and take on that righteousness of Christ. We thank you, Father, for everything that you do on this and every day. And we thank you for the moms who are out there right now, who've always taken care of us and who've always endured. Lift them up high and keep them. Hold them tight in your bosom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. On behalf of our pastor and all of the youth and young adult leadership, we hope you've enjoyed this time with us and that the message provided speaks to your heart in a positive way. To all the mother figures, moms and future moms out there, remember that you are powerful beyond measure and that there's greatness inside of you. When it seems like you don't know what you're doing or things are all crazy, know that you were built for this and you don't have to be perfect because you already are. Perfect in who you are and perfectly made and handcrafted by God. Don't ever forget your value doesn't come from what you do or what you accomplish in a day. If it did, in order to stay valuable, you'd have to do more and accomplish more. No, no, no. Please understand that your value comes from who you are and from whose you are. The love of a mother is the closest thing on earth that we have to God. Each one of us has a personal responsibility to, on, to love, honor, and respect the woman in our lives. Tupac said it best when he acknowledged, we all came from a woman, got our name from a woman, and our game from a woman. It's time to heal our women, be real to our women. To all the men, won't you stand up with me right now? Yes, you, right now. And tell the woman next to you and in your life, I care for you, I love you, and I pledge to honor you, protect you, and lift you up with every breath of life that I have. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May God bless and keep you all until we see each other again. Bye. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And, and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion, dominion and power, power.
both now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen.